you'll get this podcast come Monday. What? Because I hear the poster is going to spend the weekend updating the website. Wow, really? Is that true? Yep. Yeah, no, right. So on the line now, all the way from, uh, I believe, Wildcat. Awesome. From the golf performance of Houston, we can see the number one tee box yeah. right out the window there. Yeah. Hey, well, look at the skinny TV for all the wrong reasons. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. And how are the golf carts? Uh, the golf carts look good. Um, they they returned a few of them. So and I, I guess they caught the guys that that took them. So I think uh, we're moving forward and we got our golf carts back. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, JJ? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Just go hit hit a full bucket of balls in the Houston heat. I mean, that's punishment <laughs> enough. So, <laughs> so uh, I think the golf game is doing pretty good right now. Yeah, I feel good about my game. Um, I've been practicing this past month or so to try to get uh, geared up for it. I feel good about it. I played a tournament Monday, Tuesday, and uh, at Comanche Trace outside of San Antonio. And, uh, everything feels pretty good. So, uh, obviously the stakes will be a little bit higher, uh, next Thursday when I tee it up than it was in San Antonio, but, um, I'm excited for it. So. Well, first of all, we're talking to JJ Wood and, uh, he is a golfer, golf professional. He, uh, works out at Wildcat, not for Wildcat, but for the golf performance of Houston, which we'll get into a little bit later. And earlier this year, he went and he qualified and made the cut. He is going to Quail Hollow. Uh, I leave at 3 o'clock this afternoon, so I'm going to teach here uh, for a little bit. I kind of combine my my lessons, and we're going to play a little match. Um, it's my high school players that are, are good, so hopefully they don't beat me and ruin my confidence. But uh, our lesson's going to be on the course, so I can get some practice in as well. And uh, and then I'll I'll head home around lunch and head to the airport. So. Uh, yeah, so, uh, my parents, they, uh, they got online right when they heard I qualified and booked, uh, booked a house about a half a mile from the golf course. So we're probably the first ones outside of, you know, the top 10 players in the world that knew they were going to be playing <laughs> at a reserve spot. And then, uh, my brother caddied for me in Oregon at the PGA professional, uh, national championship. So he did a good job of, you know, keeping me, keeping me level headed when I was getting frustrated. Um, so I could keep making pars and, you know, make the cut and get in. Uh, so he's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna talk to Bones about that. How I can transition to from the golf course to the studio, uh, maybe going to make a TV crew. Well, JJ, I didn't know uh, you and our buddy Jonathan Dispute were uh, business partners. That is awesome. But tell our listeners how you actually became more competitive as a golfer by playing less. Um, I play a lot less. I love, not nearly as much golf as the folks are. And Joe play, but I don't think it's going to work for me because 
you were an accomplished golfer, but how did that work? Um, you know, growing up, uh, I was, you know, my family's uh, small business owners, and I was kind of taught you got to work hard to, you know, achieve your goals. And, you know, I, I was self-taught for the most part in Yuma, Arizona. So I had a few guys that kind of helped me get started, but I just banged a lot of balls. And I think I did what most most golfers, recreational golfers do, and just hit balls with no real purpose to it. But, you know, through my college career and uh, meeting a coach that kind of transformed my game at the end of my college career. He kind of taught me just how to understand your game. And at Ohio State, when I coached up there, our motto was uh, own your game, <laughs> you know, just fully understand your game, understand what your ball flight does, what your tendencies are. And so uh, when I have a chance to play golf, you know, I, pro I really just work on my pre-shot routine and just getting myself comfortable so I can be an athlete when I hit the shot. And so that, you know, not hitting balls anymore and just kind of understanding my swing and maybe, you know, hitting a couple of shots into the net here and there between lessons or demonstrating, um, I kind of understand my, my game and I have a lot better mindset by practicing my pre-shot routine and what I'm supposed to do rather than, you know, cluttering my mind with all kinds of garbage based on hitting a shot bad, you know, the shot before and worrying about that when it really doesn't matter. So, um I mean, I think I just have a lot better mindset and a lot better understanding of how to play the game and play my game. So, uh, you know, it's not that it's not like I'm a, you know, I was just actually texting Brandon Whedon about because they're playing Wednesday night out there in Charlotte. Um, so I'm thinking about football, but it's not like I have JJ Watt running at me, you know, a hundred miles an hour and I'm getting a slam. I'm hitting a freaking golf ball. So, you know, <laughs> so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, so, uh, it was at Sun River Resort in Oregon. They've hosted a senior PGA championship. Uh, they hosted NCAAs when I played in college. And so, um, I shot 288 for four rounds. Um, and I, uh, so I was one over cause we kind of flip flop courses, but it was playing really hard four under one the event. Um, and my best memory was probably when we got to the, the 12th hole, the second round I believe it was I saw the TV cameras and I actually you know got excited I was like I told my brother I was going to do something special so we could at least get on TV I was either going to do something special or shank it in the trees and hit somebody and I was going to get on TV either way and I actually hit a perfect shot and it bounced up and hit the pin and came to about six inches I think it should have went in I think we we got unlucky but um, that was probably my biggest memory because I kind of called my shot. Well, I called one of the two options, and the the better option happened, and we got on TV. So, <laughs> well, a little trivia: I met JJ through Jonathan Disney at a very historic moment. Uh, Jonathan Disney was the Jonathan Disney Golf Club Open Championship in Boston, and Jonathan Disney and I met through Jonathan Disney 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 How awesome is his uh, trailer he's got there? <laughs> I think everybody should have one of those. Don't you? That's what I, yeah, if I make the cut and get top 20, maybe I can afford one for this year's. So I'll bring it out to the U of H films. <laughs> No, it's uh yeah, a lot of people get kind of confused with the amateur versus pro, but it's as simple as you're a pro if you accept over a certain amount of money um for your golf achievements. So, uh I'm a professional. I played for about 9 months out of college and then uh through the South Texas PGA, we play events throughout the year where we play for money. So, um I've accepted enough money to be uh, a professional, so uh, yeah, it, you know, hopefully I'll hit the lottery in Charlotte. So <laughs> we'll see. Let me, let me ask you, are, are, do you have, are you a happy Gilmore? Do you have one of those oversized <laughs> checks hanging on the wall for <laughs> Do I, no, uh, my brother does though, but it's, in, it's, oh. it's his decoration, one of those big checks. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he won the Arizona Open, uh, I guess it was 2015. 
uh, as a professional, and he, uh, that, that's, I've never seen the trophy, actually, all I've seen is the check, and it's not, it's not a very large amount, so I told him we need to add, like, a one to the front of the seven, in front of the seven, so it looks a little bigger. <laughs> you, 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 you're 33 years old, you thought you were going to be at this point when you were 23 years old, now, what's that perspective like? Um, you know, now, I, you know, I, I don't know, I think it's all, I, I guess it won't really hit me till I, I guess I tee it up out there, or maybe this afternoon when I walk up to register. But um, when I was 23, I, I kind of said that's what I thought I was, or that's what I was going to do. But I was telling Matt on the other day when he was out here, I, I didn't believe it deep down that I was good enough. And I think now being around the block, you know, with a lot of different professional golfers, Coach Dismuke, who's you know teaches a lot of a lot of. Uh, web.com and tour players, you know, I see that there's no real difference um, besides mindset from, you know, players at the high division one level. It's more about who believes they're good enough uh, versus a talent issue. So um, now I understand that and I 100% believe it. And, you know, I've, I've been telling everybody, I think, uh, I think I'm ready, but I've never been in that situation. You know, how, you know, a football player, you know, that, how would you plan a Super Bowl? You don't really know until you, how you're going to respond until you get to the Super Bowl. So they're obviously, you know, those guys are going to have a, a big, a big advantage in that aspect. They've been there. They know what to expect. But, um, as far as, you know, ball striking goes and <clears throat> the physical parts of the game, course management, that kind of stuff, I, I feel like I, I'm, you know, good enough. And my mindset, I think, you know, from my sports psychology education and coaching it, I feel like I have a leg up on the mindset stuff. So um, I, I think I'll be fine. It's just you never know until you get there. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, JJ, question. Uh, have they posted tee times, and do you know who you're teeing it up with? Yes. Um, actually, I got it last night. That was the first time I got nervous thinking about the event because I realized I registered in time, and I'm, I'm actually scheduled to play. So, um <laughs> I'm, uh, I'd actually never heard of one of the guys, Ryan Fox, um, and I've been making some sarcastic remarks on social media to Dustin Johnson about playing a practice round so I could teach him how to hit it a little farther. And I find out this guy's the longest hitter on the European tour. So I don't know if the PGA is trying to get me back for my sarcastic remarks or, um, what, but then I have, uh, I'll just say his last name. It's Lee, L-I, the, the young kid from China. I think he's about 18, and he's won like a few times. He's won more professional events than I have. Let's just say that. And he's 18 years old. So, what time do you tee off on Thursday? I tee off two twenty, two twenty, I believe, on on Thursday, and then nine ten on Friday. And I just know from my brother. He said we're on the range with Ricky and Phil. So uh that's all i really know is he was just scouting out who's going to be teeing off around teeing off around us so we can warm up with them that's great this is absolutely all you need coverage jj i i hope to talk to you in two weeks uh, after you have four days over at quail hollow in the pga championship all the best to you have a great experience remember to stop and sell the roses it's a once in a lifetime experience make sure you take it all in and make some lifetime memories out of it I'm gonna try. That was the biggest advice from guys uh, around here that had talked to me that had been there before. They said, "Just don't wear yourself out. Just hang out and enjoy the experience." So that's what I'm gonna try to do. You can catch a Texans game when I'm out there too. So. Yeah. Uh, by the way, JJ Wood from Golf Performance. If people want to get their golf yeah, updated, improve their look at and improve, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, so it's golfperformancegroup.com, um, and then I have information on my site, jjwoodgolf.com, and we're on all the social media as well. And I'm actually, we're going to be doing some live updates from uh, Quell Hollow, so people in Houston can kind of see inside the ropes of what's going on. Awesome. I'll see you in Charlotte, buddy. I'll be there for the game. I'll see you. Okay, well, I'll shoot you a text, and maybe we can uh, meet up at the game. <laughs> all right, thank you. I appreciate it.